Oh. Huh. I didn't see you there. You said you, you like my, my horns? Did you want to know how to make these horns? Oh. Well, it should be relatively easy. By using objects that you pretty much have around your house, you should be sorted. Things that you'll need. You'll need some craft foam, hot glue sticks, sellotape, cardboard, scissors, a hot glue gun, and a heat gun. You'll also need some gesso. Oh, on a side note, gesso is absolutely wonderful. I've used it for my Azula armor, exemplar, and I've used it for my Urza armor, another exemplar. Right, so let's crack on into it. Using your pattern piece, you want to trace around this onto your cardboard. You need two horns, so you need to cut out two of them. Next we're going to make the horns 3D. By doing this, we need to measure the base of the horns. Dividing this by two, we need to then make strips of that measurement. To make them somewhat symmetrical, you'll need to trace around where the middle is. You can put a little bit of hot glue on and put your strips on. To make sure that it stays secure, just smother it in hot glue. Next we need to shape it. So start at the top and work your way to the base, making it smaller at the top and thicker at the base. Keep cutting each bit off until you find that your horn is symmetrical. Of course, you'll need to do this for the other one as well. Presuming that you now have two horns, you need to cover it. I do this by using sellotape, but you can also use paper mache. If your cellar tape is really thick, then just cut it in half. It makes it easier to work with. Just keep wrapping it until you're happy with how thick your horn is. If you see little bits that need to be filled in, then cellar tape over it. This is where the gesso comes in handy. So using your gesso, you want to just paint over your horns. It covers in all the holes and it just starts to make it look smoother. You need to keep adding layers until you're happy with the consistency of it. I generally use about six or seven layers per side. The great thing about using this method is if you don't like the way it came out, you can just cut the sellotape, tack it off and, well, start again.
For the headpiece, I use craft foam, mainly because it's really cheap, but you can also use warbler if you want. So using your pattern, you want to cut out four different pieces. This is for your front and your back. And this pattern piece does change with what shape you envision your diadem to be. Save any leftover craft foam for later on. We can use this for finer detailing. Using your sellotape, you'll want to sellotape them together. I find that putting sellotape on helps to create a smoother seam. Put this up to your face and make any adjustments that you deem necessary. Once you've done that, we can start gluing. Pop your pattern pieces inside out and glue down the seam. Once you've glued it down, pop it back inside out and run your finger down it. But if you haven't used hot glue before, then don't do it straight away because it is hot glue, which means it is very hot. Once your hot glue is set, you can take the sellotape off. Uh, just be careful because sometimes it can rip the craft foam. Find whatever one looks the best to you. This has now become your front piece. Popping them inside out, you want to put bad seam to bad seam. Glue down the bad seam and then stick them together. Once you've got your center centered, you can work your way around the rest of the headpiece. While the hot glue is drying, put it up to your face. Once the hot glue cools, it sets to your face shape. Using your elastic, we're going to find out how tight you want your headpiece to be. This is completely up to you on how tight you want it to be. Once you've done that, you cut the elastic and remember what piece is for your diadem and what piece is rubbish. Using a tiny bit of glue, you want to set it in place. Once that glue is dried, you want to smother it in hot glue so that it doesn't come loose. Grab your horns and see if they sit fine on your head. Mark it down where you about you want them. If your horn doesn't sit right, you'll need to cut bits off it. Once we've done this, we want to fill it in with hot glue. Filling it in with hot glue just allows us to have a base to glue it onto the diadem. Put some glue onto the base and then onto your diadem. You will need to fill in the gaps around the horn, so just use your hot glue gun and do that. Wow, Sugui, look at that, you've got one horn. We'll just need to repeat the process for the other horn. And now we're going to put some clothing on that naked headpiece. This is where your leftover craft foam comes in handy. I'm a student and I do not like to waste me some good money. From then on, it's pretty much a matter of personal preference. Mm -hmm. 
I normally like to, you know, check myself out once I put my horns on, just to see how it's looking. Once again, grab your G-Sir, cover the front and the back. The back's also important because then you seal it off from your body sweat. Well, not really body sweat, more like face sweat. Because trust me, it does get quite hot. anything you want onto that. If you wanted to add gems, you could add gems. If you wanted to add glitter, you could add glitter. Whatever floats your boat. If the only difference between this item that we have just made and this item, which I've had made since last year, is that this one has a different horns. These horns were made from paper mache and wool filler. So instead of using gesso, I use the wall filler to cover it. Wall filler is what you use to make your uh, wall consecutively and have no bumps. If that's what you call wall filler in other parts of the country. I'm from New Zealand and that's what we call it. I think. But yeah, that's how you make a diadem. If uh, I've been vague in any bits, which I probably have, then feel free to leave a comment and I will get back to it in a day or two. Yeah, so have fun crafting and I